you won't believe what Jesus said about aliens. Welcome to Spiritual Ascension, where we dive into the intriguing world of near-death experiences and explore new insights about life and death. Our aim is to shed light on these profound stories, deepen your understanding of existence, and offer valuable perspectives. Whether you're here for the first time or returning, we're excited to have you join us. If you enjoy our content, consider subscribing and liking our videos to help us reach more people. Sit back, relax, and prepare to explore the edge of life and beyond. Today's story features Evelyn, who describes an encounter with a light entity she believes to be Jesus. She shares her experiences and what she was told. Let's jump into her story. My name is Evelyn, and this is what happened to me. While driving an old car, I lost control and the vehicle rolled down a slope. During this, I felt as if my deceased father was supporting my head as the car shook violently. I found myself in a dream where I was flying. When I woke up, I realized I was still flying. Unlike other flying dreams, this one felt real and continuous. I kept flying without descending. I noticed I was moving slower when I tried to go forward and couldn't move downward. As I tried to stop, I realized I wasn't dreaming. I looked at the tops of the trees, the grass, the road, and everything around me with incredible clarity, even better than with my glasses. I could see the sky clearly as well. I felt the cool April air and the warmth of the morning sun. Looking down, I saw my car upside down with my body on top of it. I wondered what was above me. My astral body seemed to turn to face the sky. I saw what I think was a vortex a gap in the sky filled with clouds and lightning like plasma. Inside this vortex were stars, not the ones we see at night, but stars at the centre of the universe. It was like a galaxy revolving around an incredibly bright light. Light orbs of different colours and sizes were moving in and out of this vortex. I knelt and said, oh my god, you are. I felt a deep realisation of my own ignorance. I had always known God existed since birth. As a child, I used to ask God about the size of the universe before bed and tried to imagine travelling as far as possible before falling asleep. I had a strong grasp of concepts and was a math prodigy I could divide by ten at age six and had prophetic dreams before I could speak. When I was eight, I dreamed my family would die in an accident on the way to Nevada. I told them in the dream, but they didn't believe me. I didn't want to believe it was true because I was terrified of losing them. I thought it was cruel for God to give me such dreams when I couldn't change the outcome. My clarity of reality began to fade, and I pleaded with God to stop these troubling visions. Between my childhood and the accident, I went through many intense and difficult experiences. These included painful trials and traumatic events that no child should face. These challenges caused me to lose my connection with God. I turned to drugs, wild parties, and self-destructive behaviours, hurting myself and others in the process. In the midst of this, I had a profound experience where I saw my life from God's perspective. I was shown times when I acted selfishly and made decisions based only on my own interests. I saw moments when I manipulated others or caused conflict for personal gain. The sadness and regret were overwhelming. I felt a deep, intense pain, as if my entire being was struck by a powerful force. I can only imagine how much worse it would be if I had engaged in more serious wrongdoings. During this experience, a light being approached me. Though I wasn't raised with religious beliefs or baptisms, this being seemed to represent Christ. It wasn't like the Christ we often see in art or associated with any particular religious group. This being's compassion was beyond my understanding, and I couldn't grasp the full extent of its love until it touched me. The being said, I'll take it, it's for me, and removed the painful sensation from me, saying, you are forgiven. As the pain disappeared, the being explained, you were made of flesh, and with flesh comes biology, psychology, instinct, desire, ego, and all that goes with it. Being human means you will make mistakes. It's part of being human, since then I have felt a deep sense of peace. I realised this being was part of a greater light, responsible for guiding and caring for our planet. At the time I could only understand this being in simple terms. However, it sparked a curiosity in me about many things, like aliens, UFOs and parallel universes. 
I then experienced a feeling of being gently guided, and I seemed to have access to a vast knowledge about the universe, from its creation to its end. I understood many concepts including cosmology, biology, spirituality, consciousness and more. I realized that God encompasses everything that has ever existed and everything that will never exist. Since I am human, I can only understand this concept in terms that make sense to me. Even the most advanced knowledge is still seen through a human perspective. When I was about 14, I pondered whether God could create a rock so heavy that even he could not move it. I concluded that the answer could be both yes and no, all at once. After this realization, I became aware of my physical body and understood that if I didn't return to it, it would cease to function. My presence was essential for keeping it alive and moving through time and space. At this point, I apologized for interrupting the story and said I had to go back. I received a message that I needed to take full responsibility for my actions. I quickly gathered myself and returned to the light being. It felt like I jumped back into my body with a sudden, powerful force, almost as if I was cramming too much into a tight space. I briefly let go of some of my understanding to get back into my body as quickly as possible. I knew I could reconnect later, but for now I needed to complete a task. Returning to my body felt like stepping into a large, cold, empty house with no power or comfort. I was almost panicking when I felt a surge of determination. I managed to move my right leg but couldn't feel my left leg. I moved through my organs, into my heart, and then down my arms, finally reaching my head. I focused on my brain and tried to get my body moving again. I told my brain to start working and instructed my blood to flow and my heart to beat. I tried to breathe, but my breath was whistling loudly. When I tried to open my eyes they were covered in thick blood, which I blinked away. As soon as I started to move, a rattling noise in my spine and head made me stop. I could hear the car's engine and the radio which sounded eerie. A soldier nearby was crying. When I asked him what was wrong, he said he thought I was dead. I reassured him that I had just spoken to God and everything would be fine. He held my hand and wore a hat similar to a cowboy hat. He told me I was his hero and I told him he was mine. He urged me to stay awake and talk to him. I admitted that I was responsible for the accident and asked about my friends. He said they would be okay and explained what had happened. I felt dizzy and almost passed out from the noise and confusion. The ambulance arrived and I heard them preparing to use the jaws of life. I was worried it might kill me so I managed to get out by myself, even though my body was struggling. I was put in the ambulance with an IV oxygen and a trooper by my side who told me I could sleep while he held my hand. In the hospital, I was surrounded by medical equipment, X-rays, heart monitors and other noises. I was in and out of consciousness in the intensive care unit for 36 hours. I received morphine and thought I saw spiders everywhere. A priest and nuns came in to pray and give me last rites multiple times while waiting for my mother. Throughout this, I hovered above my body, watching everything unfold. Each time the priest began the last rites, I would re-enter my body and tell them to stop because I was still alive. My spirit felt fine, even though my body seemed to be struggling. My spirit knew everything was okay, despite my body's fears. At that moment, a being made of light appeared. This figure was striking, with a handsome face, deep brown eyes, a strong jaw and long, curly black hair. He wore a simple cloth robe, but it was filled with a beautiful, radiant light. He looked both concerned and knowing. I exclaimed, wow, how did you do that? How did you appear so suddenly? You're amazing. Thanks. He responded, what you need to focus on now is living truthfully. It might seem simple, but it can be challenging. I believe you can handle it, I took his advice, embraced honesty, and accepted responsibility. He seemed pleased and said, it may be difficult, but you are capable. He then turned to a cross, and when he touched my hand, I felt a comforting warmth throughout my body. I was stabilized and kept in my body. I was later sent to Minneapolis, where Dr. Templeman performed a groundbreaking surgery to rebuild my bones. It was a new, innovative procedure. I spent five weeks in the hospital and then six months in a nursing home for rehabilitation. 
I wrote in my journal about how standing felt like holding my heart, walking felt like moving my spirit, and dancing felt like claiming my soul. After nine months I could walk, and six months later I could stand. Now I can dance without pain. Evelyn's experience illustrates the consequences of living a self-centered and sinful life. It's not a pleasant outcome, but it doesn't fully explain where one might end up in the afterlife. To learn more about that, watch the next near-death experience.